Clean and jerk. Four by one dot one dot one. Rest ten seconds. Rest two minutes. So this is a notation for a cluster set. So in other words, you would do one clean and jerk. You'd rest ten seconds. You do another clean and jerk. You'd rest ten seconds. You do one more clean and jerk, and then you'd rest two minutes. We're gonna do that for three more total sets. So in other words, that's how you're going to interpret that programming. So cluster sets have long been used in the weightlifting community to. I think really kind of for two reasons. One would just be to build quality volume in a way where technical breakdown is minimized so that someone's blood pressure and systemic fatigue can stay relatively low, but they can, again, build uh, that quality volume and just get more total reps in while them still being as quality as possible. But then B is just you can also increase the loading is maybe in terms of like a percentage of their uh, one RM without having to necessarily reduce the amount of volume that they're doing, which that's a very rare thing for you to increase the percentage and not decrease the volume or at a certain threshold for that not to occur. That's a very rare thing. So if you can do that, that's obviously super advantageous. So I see those as both being super useful tools. And I think, you know, more people in the strength conditioning world can start to implement that and certainly in the, in the CrossFit space as well. So today I want to provide a model as to how you can use cluster sets to build strength and capacity. The fitness movement is brought to you by Zor Fitness. We offer coaching and individualized program design, as well as educational content for coaches and athletes. It's all at one place. Zorfitness.com. Today, I want to go over two different things. One would be the ways that I actually use cluster sets. So for the athletes that I coach, what are the things that I consistently find myself going back to and actually using and implementing in their programming? So practically, what is actually working and what am I sticking with over a course of several years? And it's not just something that I try out and then discard after a couple of months. Um, so what has stuck around? And then two, what are some other effective uh, models that could be used or, or ways that we could think about or implement cluster sets in either pieces or full progressions that, uh, you know, a coach or an athlete could implement um, and still get really good, you know, good training outcomes, like improve your strength, improve your capacity, improve your endurance, um, like get the things that you want to get and that they're just so happen to be things that I don't necessarily implement for whatever reason. So what do I use? And then what are other things that could be effective? So the top ways that I personally have found myself using cluster sets is five different things. First would be technique weightlifting work. So this is sort of the idea that I alluded to in the intro, um, basically working on moderate loads, um, you know, moderate rep ranges and making sure that the quality of that work stays really high and that it's basically form focused as you're doing that. Two would be heavy barbell cycling and the Basically, in this case, it's a notation to drop and reset, and I just sort of use that cluster set notation as a way to dictate that to my athletes. Three would be gymnastic strength capacity work. We can talk about what exactly that means in a bit, uh, but yeah, I, I, that's definitely one that I use quite a lot. And then four would be prescribing how an athlete actually um, you know, does breaks in their, their chunks of work. So in other words, they have 50 chest to bar. How can I dictate that they break that up so that they get the, the dose or the, the impact of the training that I actually want for them to get out of it. And then lastly would be cyclical cluster set, which is something that in the last maybe 18 months, two years, I've started using a lot more and I found good success with it. And I really uh, like, it. and I think it's a different take on some conditioning work. So we'll go into that as well. And then other useful applications, I just personally haven't used them a ton, um, but I think they're things that could be super useful and they're abide by good principles and would make sense. Would one, would be applying the same type of cluster set work that we could do for weightlifting and applying that to the absolute strength lifts. So um, absolute strength or the slower lifts, uh, just like in terms of like bar speed, it's gonna be a little bit slower because the absolute load is higher. So for example, like powerlifting, a squat bench deadlift that would certainly apply i think for crossfit things like front squat deadlift uh, back squat um, are probably like the biggest ones that that applies to second would be weightlifting battery work so again i personally don't use this um, however I, I tend to write in a little bit of a different way when i do battery or sort of like repeatable hard uh, lifts especially like olympic lifts in particular i'm thinking uh, about this 
I just write in a slightly different way, and I'll kind of get into that in the in the episode once we get a little bit deeper on into that. But uh, yeah, I personally don't use that, but I think it would be appropriate for a lot of people. And then three would be drop sets of more volume based, uh, like bodybuilding protocols. So before we get into this, a few helpful resources that will be super useful to you because this episode is super dense in actually uh, training pieces like programming written out, what could be built into progressions. So it's really easy to uh, get lost in that as I read it to you. So it's much easier if you can actually visualize that in front of you. So go look at the show notes as you're watching this. Even if you're watching on YouTube right now, I'd encourage you to go to the description below, click on the link, pop over there, restart the video, on the actual browser so that you can see, again, have that visual uh, representation of what I'm actually saying as you can look at it. It's probably helpful for most people. Again, if you're listening to this only, I will link to it in the show notes of whatever platform you're on. So uh, you can check it out there. Again, it's zorfitness.com slash podcast slash 088. Uh, and that way you can view all these. Two other helpful resources before we get into it. I've written uh, two different articles on cluster sets before. If you want more on this, again, I will link to them on that show notes page. It's all built out on the website. Uh, the first was lifting more weight with cluster sets. The very first article that I've ever written on ZorFitness.com. I will link to that. And then also I kind of did a follow-up on that uh, probably two years later, which was called using cluster sets to develop uh, weightlifting, gymnastics, and cyclical movement capacity. It's a mouthful, but it's a good one. Uh, so you can check those uh, resources out as well. So let's dive into it. The top ways that I find myself uh, programming cluster sets. Number one is weightlifting technique work. So uh, typically for this kind of thing, it's more moderate sets. It's lower fatigue. It's really form-focused work where it allows a drop, a quick recovery, a reset, so that person can try to mimic the same exact pattern that they're using each time they go up to lift the bar. So if you're doing a snatch, I want you to drop, reset that bar, set up and execute that lift in the exact same way every time so you can work on dialing in your technique. That's probably the majority of the ways that I use uh, cluster sets for weightlifting. So basically it's allowing the athlete to accumulate more work at a higher quality level than if you just gave them sets where they're either doing touch and go reps or just kind of dropping and resetting really quickly. And that's like a rush process. When you give them just like that little bit short break, even if it's only five seconds between clusters, it allows them to kind of at least nothing else, literally take a breath or two, um, kind of like mentally reset and prepare for the next lift rather than thinking about kind of rushing through them because they just need to like get through the triple. Right. So I think writing it also helps the athlete, especially if you kind of can communicate with them verbally of what's going on and you can do that as a coach. I think that's super helpful to be able to say, hey, this is what why we're doing this. And this is the intention that I want you to have while we're going about this. So, um, yeah, that short break is super helpful from just a focus perspective, um, but also from a physiological perspective as well. So. The goal here, as I mentioned, is that each of these lifts look exactly the same as the one previous to it. So an example that I've used countless times, uh, just kind of starting off progressions for different clients and seeing where their technique technique is at. And also if someone who doesn't have a ton of exposure, it can kind of start to get them back into uh, lifting full lifts again. Uh, here's the example. Snatch. Six sets of 1.1.1. One one one. That's 70%. Rest five seconds between clusters, 90 seconds between sets. So that could easily be a first week of a progression. And then maybe you go 73%, 76, uh, 79, 82, 85%, right? You, that could easily right there be like a six week progression. Um, even if you don't change the sets and reps, you just have that intensity slowly building and working on them, maintaining the, vo uh, maintaining the quality of that uh, technique and trying to make them as pretty as possible uh, while that percentage slowly creeps up over the upcoming weeks. Another example would be uh, clean plus a jerk plus a jerk, 5.1.1. So in other words, you'd do a clean and a jerk, you'd catch the jerk, jerk it again, drop, you'd reset in between as the cluster, and then you do that whole complex a second time. So here you're resting 15 sec seconds in between those clusters. So in between each of those complexes, you're going to drop and reset. Again, just allowing for blood pressure to come back down. You're going to clear a little bit of fatigue. It's not going to be a lot. It's mainly just like allowing the person to kind of Take a few breaths, clear everything out, and kind of get started again. Uh, so five sets of 1.1, .1, you can start at 60% and build to like an RPE 8.5. For people listening who are in the powerlifting community and they're used to hearing RPE and thinking reps in a reserve, I write 
reps in reserve as and rep minus one and rep minus one to two, uh, that kind of language. So anytime I say RPE, it's as a rating of perceived exertion out of 10. Uh, the other way that I use it, it was with like heavier barbell cycling. And typically for this, it's really just like notating to the athlete, like, hey, drop and reset these reps. So uh, a, a simple example would be, you know, a 15 minute rotating imam on first minute, 1.1.1 power clean and push jerk, 65% of their weakest lift. So if their push jerk is weaker than the power clean, they're doing 65% of that. Again, just saying that you're having to drop and reset in between each of those, and I don't want them to be touch and go. Minute two, 12 bar fizzing burpees. Minute three, 30 double unders. Uh, something like that, right? Again, all that's saying is that you have to drop and reset. And as they drop and reset, it helps them to kind of keep that form focus as they're going about their work. Um, so I like doing that so that people can focus on having the highest quality work that they can. Um, and even if it's at a uh, slightly uh, higher systemic work rate. So I think something like the example that I'm about to give is a good example of what practically I'd, I'd give quite a bit in training. And this is something where even if the athlete doesn't necessarily know the intention that I have behind it, it's constrained a little bit where they kind of get the outcome that I want, even if they don't necessarily know what I want out of it. And I think good coaches uh, do that. Like they can find ways that even if an athlete isn't exactly sure what they should be doing, they can start to constrain them into what they want them to do. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of read this and I think hopefully it'll be evident because of that. Five sets, uh, four time at high effort. 1.1.1, power clean and jerk at 205, 145, eight bar facing burpee. 1.1, power clean and jerk, eight bar facing burpee, one power clean and jerk, and then you'd rest two minutes in between each one of those sets. So you do all of that work five total times, resting two minutes between each of those. All right, the third way that I use it is gymnastics strength capacity work. And the reason why I worded it as strength capacity work is because it's not truly absolute strength work. Absolute strength, just as it sounds, is working on the very uh, far right of the spectrum, right? Basically saying like, what can you do in, in a very, very heavy or maximal contraction? So like a weighted pull up that's, you know, five sets of maybe two to three reps or something like that is going to be working on more strength, uh, absolute strength. Here, strength capacity, I'm thinking about someone who's more so working on like, maybe not like rep maxes because that could get really high. But typically, if I write this sort of work as someone who's not great at, for example, like upper body pulling in the example I'm just about to give. Uh, however, it's a way for them to get more quality work in and build their tolerance and probably also, frankly, their maxes as they do that. But it's more focused on the uh, building repeatability side of it versus building the absolute strength like what can you do for one rep uh, side of it? So again, if it was absolute strength, it could be a five by three way to pull up as heavy as you can go, resting to full recovery in between each of those. For something that's more strength capacity and the example that I'm giving here for uh, the cluster sets, it could be something like, you know, say this athlete has a rep max of 10. Um, they're doing five sets of a 5.3.2 strict pull up where they're resting 30 seconds between clusters and two and a half minutes between sets. So. <laughs> like, why would I do this versus just giving them straight sets? Well, let's compare this again, saying this athlete has a rep max of 10. Um, so we gave them straight sets, meaning that we just gave them five sets of seven reps, for example, um, which would be very challenging if they could actually get it done because um, doing 70% of rep max and doing that five times is pretty hard uh, unless they're taking like a substantial rest. So, but even there, it's the volume of that is 35 reps, right? So they're getting 35 strict pull-ups in that, that piece of the workout. Versus if we do the example of uh, five, dot, uh, five sets of 5.3.2, that's in each one of those uh, cluster sets combined uh, is 10 reps. So now we're looking at a volume of 50 versus 35. So right there, they're getting an extra 15 pull-ups in uh, across that working piece. And if they're getting extra work in and likely uh, it's higher quality work, you know, they're going to improve much quicker. And the reason that this can be higher quality work is that they're doing the first rep of a, a set, which is always going to be the highest quality one. They're doing that. They're having three opportunities to do that versus one opportunity to do that. So each time you're restarting a cluster, it's another opportunity to have a really high quality rep to start that off. So even though you're doing more volume, you also have more opportunities to make that first rep the best one and make it as clean as you possibly can. So again, more quality more volume, you're gonna get better results from that.
right? Another example of gymnastics work would be uh, maybe something for like strict handstand pushups would be a good example here. You could do eight sets of 4.3.2 where instead of like prescribing a, a rest break for each of those clusters, you could just say kick down, uh, rest little as you possibly need to, and then kick back up onto the wall and rest two minutes on the air bike in between each of those sets. So it doesn't seem like much when you're doing, you know, four at the most in, in one of those clusters. However, the volume across that, because you got a lot of sets and they all add up, it's 72 strict handstand pushes by the end of all that. So it's definitely something that will add up uh, relatively quickly. You could also do this where you vary the movements. So in other words, you could do four sets, uh, 6.4 parallel handstand pushup, big deficit, you can use a kip, and then 4.4 strict handstand pushup where it's flat, but they gotta be strict. Uh, and then 8.6 kipping handstand pushup again to that uh, flat, no deficit. So for each of those, you could rest maybe five to 15 seconds between those uh, clusters or the exercises. So every time uh, you kick off the wall, you're gonna take a rest break. And then in between each of the sets, you rest maybe three minutes or two, a really good recovery. So I would say that's probably gonna be for a more advanced athlete and it's more of a muscular endurance protocol, but that sort of thing's really helpful because we saw a, a test like that with varying handstand pushups in, in quarterfinals of 2022. So I think that sort of thing is a, it was, would be really appropriate to prescribe for a lot of higher level CrossFit athletes. The fourth way that I tend to use cluster sets is with prescribing uh, chunking or how to break up a chunk of work maybe in an athlete's mixed work in particular, what I'm thinking about this. So here's the example, it'll make sense after this. Uh, every eight minutes for four sets, four time, uh, you'll be doing 16 calorie row, eight birdie box jump overs uh, of 24 inches, 4.3.3 ring muscle up, eight birdie box jump overs, 16 calorie row. So basically they could have wrote that as, you know, 10 ring muscle ups and then just sort of made a note to the athlete as like, hey, break these up four, three, three, because this is what I want you to do. And you know, that would be the exact same thing. It's just like, I think it's easy to write it in that way. So that's the way that I found myself consistently doing it in that way is yeah, just breaking it up for the athletes. So they know, Hey, this, these are the breaks that I want you to take. Right. I don't always do that. Like certainly they, you know, if it was a different movement, it was 20 toes to bar. I could just left it as that. And they might just have to break it up as they see fit. However, I think sometimes it makes sense to prescribe those breaks for the athlete. And the fifth and final way that I find myself frequently using uh, cluster sets is with cyclical cluster sets. Um, I actually did a video with Assault Fitness, uh, partnered with them, and one of the, the videos in the series that I, I made on the Assault Rower was called Six Different Styles of Intervals Explained. Um, and one of those was cyclical cluster sets. So let's go over it here. Uh, there's a number of ways that you could do this. I want to give, uh, you know, like, three, four different examples. The first would just be like straight sets on a cyclical machine. So like row calories, you go six by 15 dot, 15 dot, 15. So 15 calories, rest 20 seconds, 15 calories, rest 20 seconds, 15 calories, and then you rest two minutes, rinse and repeat. Another one would be, uh, and this is sort of what I prefer to do is descending uh, sets. So in other words, uh, the, the amount of work that you're doing in each one of those clusters goes down. So in this case, it's going to be 21, uh, then 15, then nine calories on the rower. And that way it kind of allows you to maintain the intensity across that, the working clusters. And then between sets is where you get to fully sort of uh, recover and uh, really reactionate the system well. So this is actually a workout that I did the other morning. So I figured I'd share it. Uh, it was on a 40 minute clock, 21.15.9 calories on the rower, resting 20 seconds between clusters, and then after each set, resting three minutes on the air bike. Another example could be done with distance on the rower, uh, four sets of 750.500.250 meters on the rower, resting 30 seconds between clusters, and two minutes between sets. It's just an easy way to say you're doing a bigger chunk of work, a medium chunk of work, and a smaller chunk of work, all at relatively the same pace, but the fatigue is gonna go up as you get deeper, but then also the work rest ratio uh, starts to improve as you get deeper into that. And then you get a longer break and you can go back. Last example is on the air bike, it's uh, sets of calories. Three sets of 10.10.10.10.10. Do not set the monitor between clusters, rest 30 seconds between each of those clusters and walk or rest six minutes between sets. So in other words, it's a bunch of short sprints with relatively short rest relative to the output they're gonna be doing on that erg. Um, 
and then resting a nice a long chunk, making sure that you're clearing most of the fatigue that's been built up in the system, and then you're gonna do it again. <laughs> okay, let's get into part two where I talk about other useful applications, even if personally I haven't used these a lot, things that I think could be useful. First would be with the absolute strength lifts. So in CrossFit, again, I think this could be back squat, front squat, deadlift. Uh, practically, you're going to be the biggest ones that you'd use this with. Here's an example that I've gone through in my own training, which was really rough. <laughs> I would not recommend just doing this cold, but building into it. Uh, every six minutes for three sets, 6.5.4.3 back squats at 70%. Rest as little as possible between clusters to be successful. So in other words, uh, at zero, 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 you would do a set of six back squats at 70%. You'd re-rack it and you take as short a break as you possibly think you can before you can do five reps unbroken. Uh, you unrack it, do your five reps, re-rack it, same thing, wait as little as possible to do your four, wait as little as possible to do your three. And then at the six minute mark, you do it again, and at the 12 minute mark, you do it one more time. Uh, so it's a lot of density pushed into that. Um, you know, the the requirement just from a nervous system perspective to put that, that kind of thing out is super challenging. So again, I wouldn't just jump into that, but uh, something that for someone who's got a higher training age, it could be effective, right? And someone who's pretty volume, volume tolerant. Uh, so absolute strength lifts, I think, again, you could do that with touching your deadlifts or um, I use the example as front squat or back squat. You can certainly do as front squat as well. Uh, weightlifting battery work is the second way that I think it, it could be used more. I just personally don't use it a lot in that way. Um, so similar to before uh, in terms of like the things I laid out for uh, weightlifting work. However, um, I don't think what I was saying was true like battery work. So battery work is not going to be something that you're going to do in the sport of weightlifting, uh, snatch and clean and jerk. You're not going to do that um, – you know, like a recreational setting, it's going to be reserved really for a, a more developed, a higher level CrossFit athlete who's going to need that uh, development. So, um, and really, I, I kind of wrote it before, but it wasn't even then really battery work. I was just kind of noting a drop and reset, whereas this is going to be intentional breaks. Like basically you're prescribing the amount of rest you want the person to have. Um, so it's more so true uh, battery work. So here's the example. Power clean and push jerk, 4.1.1.1.1.1. I think I might have put an extra one. Four, uh, four sets of five reps uh, as uh, singles, basically. Um, at 275 or 175 and rest 10 seconds between clusters. So obviously I prescribed weights there, but it would have to be appropriate for that person. And in general, I would say that you have to know this person really well if you're going to prescribe that kind of work. Uh, it's definitely challenging. So personally... Again, why, why I don't use this is like I personally just use it as typically like I write this as, you know, every 15 seconds, every 20 seconds, every 30 seconds to be doing it, uh, a lift versus saying that you're going to rest, uh, you know, 15 seconds in between because say you get done with your, your one cluster, you drop the bar, you look over, it's 256 on the clock and you got to figure out, okay, <laughs> with my 180 beats per minute uh, heart rate, can I figure out how I can add 15 seconds to uh, 256, right? Which is not always super easy to do. Um, and that the mental math can get taxing and kind of pull the athlete away from, um, the intention of the workout, right, which is to like focus on doing the lift with the best technique that they possibly can and keep things really clean. So, um, yeah, that's personally why I don't really write it that way. And I tend to write things as every X number of seconds or every X number of minutes instead. Um, I just think that that's, it's easy for people to figure out the math on, on those types of sets. Again, the one thing that's not as great about that is that you have to know the athlete's capacity super well. And if you don't know their capacity super well, I probably wouldn't recommend giving that type of work to your athletes. Um, so if you're starting off with somebody, you're much better off being a little bit conservative and giving them stuff that they could be successful with and then building on it, right? It's the same thing with volume. You're better off starting them a little bit below threshold that they could probably hold and then building them up rather than doing the opposite where you start them at a very high threshold. You realize, oh, shoot, they can't handle this volume and pull, pull them back a little bit. Um, I think you're always better off playing it a little bit conservative at the beginning and then building them based on the feedback that they actually give you. Our third and final way that, again, I think could be very useful. I've, I've actually used this some. I just don't 
prescribe this kind of thing a lot is drop sets of uh, voluminous um, bodybuilding work. I think I just coined a new term with voluminous. I don't know if that's an actual word or not. Um, but it's it's this is really the same idea as the the gymnastics example that I gave before, where um, you can get more volume into a set than you normally could with just like a straight set. So instead of like a dumbbell lateral raise where you're doing four sets of twenty. Uh, you could do uh, dumbbell lateral raises of 15.8.7. So instead of 20 uh, reps in each set, you can push that all the way up to 30. So you're getting 150% of the volume um, that you would if you did it as a straight set, right? And that's a huge advantage, right? You can take a, a short break, maybe it's you know 15, 20 second break, and you can crank out a couple more reps. And that's something that in like, that kind of bodybuilding style, um, you can just accumulate a lot more and it's a great way to drive a, a nice pump into the system. So if you do run one of these progressions, be sure to let me know. Um, I'd love to know how it goes, uh, if you found value in it. So you can reach out to me on Instagram at Zwerf Fitness or you can email me ben at ZwerfFitness.com. So I hope you found this helpful and you can start to implement these ideas so that you can build strength and capacity using cluster sets. Thanks for listening today. If you're someone who just found the show, I would encourage you to subscribe so you can stay up to date. If you're someone who's been listening for a while and enjoying what you're hearing, I would encourage you to leave a rating or review for the show. It would definitely help us out. And lastly, if you're someone who does take your fitness seriously and cares about your performance deeply, I would encourage you to look into hiring one of our coaches. Until next time, stay the course.